Hello and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to Instant Deck Decks. In this series we go over everything you need to build a certain commander. We'll go over the strategies and the types of cards needed you need to get the deck working. Any cards we mention will be down in the description below. In this video we're going to be talking about the Beamtown Bullies. It is one black red green for a 4-4 legendary creature ogre devil warrior with vigilance and haste. It has tap, target opponent whose turn it is, puts target non legendary creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under their control. It gains haste and goad it. That means until your next turn that creature attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you. At the beginning of the next end step exile that creature. This is going to be a little bit of a chaos deck with a self mill sub theme. We'll be using the Beamtown Bullies as a way of reanimating creatures and gifting them to our opponents with that activated ability. Unfortunately for our opponents they might not be super happy with the cards we're gifting them. Before we go over our sections let's quickly go over the strategy of this deck and importantly how it wins. To start with we're going to want to fill up our graveyard with creatures as quickly as possible. This means we'll have discard effects and graveyard tutors so we have plenty of fuel for the Beamtown Bullies. What we'll be putting into our graveyard is creatures that normally have massive downsides. We'll then be reanimating them with the Beamtown Bullies and gifting them to an opponent. That opponent will then get the downsides of that creature which can really mess up their strategies and game plans. The fact that creatures are goaded and means they have to attack a different opponent is also going to be really strong, as some of the creatures we can bring back are absolute units that can take a hefty chunk out of a player's life total. Let's start off with our self mill, we'll be using these to get creatures into the graveyard as quickly as possible. To an extent this will also replace most of the card draw that we would normally run in the deck, as with the Beamtown Bullies the graveyard will be an extension of our hand. First up is cards that let us discard from our hand while drawing more cards. What's nice about these is they give us some additional card selection while also filling up our graveyard. A lot of them are also nice and cheap so it gives us something to do in the early game as well. Next up are cards that just take the top of our library and put it straight into our graveyard, helping us to fuel the Beamtown Bullies. If they're one or two mana then it's fine for them to only mill us once. When things get a bit more expensive you want them to be milling you over and over again, putting cards into your graveyard turn after turn. Then you have some tutors, but when you want that consistency to make sure you're putting the most broken thing in your graveyard as quickly as possible. And obviously as it's me I'm also going to recommend running some dredge cards, for when you want to turbocharge things just a little bit. These work really well with those discard effects as that you put them back into the graveyard ready to be dredged back again. Next up are the so called bad creatures. These are creatures that we never want to be on our side of the board but are perfectly happy for an opponent to have to deal with them. First up is Inverter of Truth and Leveller. When you can set these up properly these cards can win the game, but if your deck is not prepared for them, like most commander decks won't be, these cards can basically kill an opponent straight away by exiling their library. These cards are also pretty big as well, and remember that they're goaded when they come back into play so they have to swing at another opponent as well. Next up is Eater of Days, which again hits someone for 9 flample damage, but it also means that the player who gets control of it will skip their next 2 turns, giving us plenty of time to work out how to take them out. After that we have Avaracious Dragon, which will strip an opponent of all the cards in their hand at the end of turn. You then have a card like Hellcarver Demon, which when it connects makes the controller sacrifice all other permanents that they control. They do get 6 cards off the top of their library to try and rebuild, but importantly that doesn't include land. Then you also have some life loss with cards like Ebonblade Reaper, which takes half a player's life total, and Soulgorger Org, which puts them to 1. They will get the life back at the end of the turn with the Soulgorger Org, but there's plenty of direct damage floating around in a game of Commander, so being on 1 life for a whole turn could be really dangerous for them. We then have some cards that make them sacrifice some of their permanents. Lesser Gargadon will take out one of their lands, and then Phyrexian Negator will either deal 5 damage to an opponent, or if it's blocked will make the controller sacrifice permanents equal to the damage that it is dealt. Finally in this section we have the Hunted Cycle of Cards. These can help come up with the board while leaving one opponent weaker than the rest. Moving over to our ramp, diversity is going to be the order of the day. First up we have some Mana Dorks, that can come down early and tap for mana to ramp us ahead. Having some ramp be on creatures will be important as it'll play into some of our win cons that we'll get into later in the video. Next up is Rampant Growth Effects, let's search the deck for a land and put it into play. As this is a 3 color deck, cards that let you search for non basic lands such as Farseek and 3 visits will be better as they let you search up any budget jewels that you might be running. And then because of all that mill we have, we can also look to run some spells that either let us play lands from the graveyard in the form of Ramen Up Excavator, or bring them all back in one go with World Shaper. Moving over to our interaction, black, red and green have plenty of good options out there. One synergistic bit first of all is Avatar of Woe. With all the self mill in the deck this could easily cost just black black to cast, and for a card that can remove a creature every turn is pretty strong. 
For some more targeted interaction, pick the best bits in these colours that you have available to you. I generally want to look for things that can answer as wide a range of threats as possible. So for example, feed the swarm, killing a creature and an enchantment, or putrefy, killing a creature and an artifact. Then these colours have plenty of board white options as well, so run the best ones that you have available to you. With all that self mill, at some point we might flip into our graveyard something that we actually want. To get them back, we can run a little bit of recursion. Enslaved Horror works nicely with the commander, and can bring back a value creature for us. We then get the best bits that these colours have to offer. Balaged Recovery has some nice utility, as it can also be played as a land. And then you have cards like Dread Return and Timeless Witness, which we can cast from the graveyard, so we either get to use them twice, or cast them after we've milled them. We also want to run a little bit of protection in the deck, for our commander and for our graveyard. Wand of Vertebrae and Perpetual Timepiece are both really solid cards in this deck. They help with the milling that we need to get our commander going, but then they can also let us protect some key cards from our graveyard in case anyone ever tries to exile it out from under us. Then you can also look to a card like Swiftfoot Boots, which helps save the bullies from any targeted removal that your playgroup might be packing. Moving over to some win cons, we have a number of different ways that we can take it. First up is with some untap effects. What this does is it lets us activate the Beamtown Bullies more than once per turn cycle. This means we can bring back more and more miserable creatures to mess up with our opponent's game plan. And then we also have Flayer of the Hatebound, which because it's worded as enters the battlefield from our graveyard, not under our control, means that we can start dealing damage to an opponent or their best creature whenever we bring something back. Next up might be a little bit controversial, but go with me on this, we can actually run some good creatures that we can animate back. These are still great at hitting opponents in the life total, even if they're under an opponent's control. But also, it's nice to have some big creatures that we can actually cast ourselves if we want to get that last swing through and close out a game. Last up is a nice little release valve I like running in any self mill deck, and that's Jared Golgari Lichlord. It can bring itself back from the graveyard, and when combined with the card that's power is equal to the things in our graveyard, means we can start hurling stuff around and win the game. Rounding off the deck with some utility lands, I wouldn't go too heavy in this, as we are a three colour deck. Of the ones I would consider, there's Gaia Reach Sanitarium, which adds to the discard in the deck. Kessage Wolf Run lets us buff up any creature that's not attacking us, and then Rogue's Passage can make sure that our creature gets through. The rest of your mana base will be very dependent on what you have available to you. We recently released a video with some advice on building a deck with a budget mana base, which might be of help. Until next time, please like, share, and subscribe, and let us know down in the comments if there are any commanders you'd like to see a deck deck on. Thank you very much for watching.